Well, in this video, I set up some timers and welded on some quarter inch plate and did some real world duty cycle tests on the Vulcan titanium welders. So if you guys want to check it out, stick around, hit like and subscribe. All right, enjoy the video guys. Here's some metal that just got delivered for an up and coming uh, welding project here. It's going to be a glue press. <laughs> Here I'm laying down some pretty high amperage welds on this half inch bar because it's going to be the floor of the glue press and I know when it goes into production it's going to get the hell beat out of it. Looking over the blueprints for this I realized there's a little bit of a measuring flaw from the engineer but we got that straightened out. So I just got done leveling up the floor because no concrete floors are ever really level. And what I have ended up doing around here is I usually just take some aluminum scrap. But this eighth inch is nice. If you put a bend to it and curve, it's kind of got an arch. On, this is a flat piece, this is an arch piece. And so you can use this as a fine tuned shim. You can put it on there and you can slide it in or out on the workpiece a little bit. It just gives slight adjustments to your uh, workpiece. It works pretty good and it's nice and strong. Technique I like to use. Here I'm just using the Vulcan to do some uh, little tack welds and make sure everything stays square and true. Later on I'll come back through and weld everything up completely solid. Here's a link to a video I did a little while back. It's a much more in-depth video on options on both welders for MIG. So check that out if you're interested. Now that I got everything tack welded, I'm going back through and re-welding it completely solid. Uh, this is all 8th inch tubing. And one thing to note, on 220 volts on the Vulcan, at this kind of amperage, this thing is 100% duty cycle. So you don't ever have to worry about overheating it, welding this kind of stuff. You can weld all day with it. By the power of Ray Skull. All right, you guys, I'm gonna be welding this quarter inch plate to eighth inch wall tubing here. And I got about roughly 240 inches of weld to put on here. I got the Vulcan Omni Pro set up for quarter inch metal. And uh, we're gonna start welding here. I got my timer. I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish this off on this one shoot. We'll weld for about 10 minutes and take a break. Now, I don't think it's gonna overheat, but maybe it will. But uh, I do think I might run out of wire sooner or later in here. I only got a little smaller spool on there. All right, we'll get welding here. This timer system's a little ghetto for this camera, but I got my smartphone duct taped onto a wire brush here. Works. Well, the Vulcan was going strong, but I ran out of wire. I just had a small spool. I thought I had a big spool here, but it turned out it was a flux core wire. What? No copper coating? Ah, mother fluxer. It's internal shield. 10 pound spool, so gotta take that back. So I gotta track down another two pound spool. But anyways, Vulcan's going strong and that. I wish it could have ran for at least 10 minutes on there, but we got like six something and Going strong, pretty much solid beads of uh, welds are here. I put another roll on here and find out. All right, pulled a pretty fresh roll out of the titanium and I put it in the Vulcan here and we'll get welding again. So we're gonna start up the clock again and get welding here.
never had any overheating problems. I'm gonna weld one more seam on here and I'm gonna set the camera up here so we can see what kind of amps it was putting down for the whole time. But uh, Vulcan did rock solid. I was kind of wondering, it was about 15 minutes of welding pretty much straight up, only stops is between moving from one point to the next and uh, no over temping issues at all. Pretty good. Burn through a second roll here, so I gotta go get a bigger spool. All right, you guys, I got the titanium here. I got the 10 pound spool of wire on it, and uh, I gotta weld all this eighth inch box tubing together before I can start welding the quarter inch plate on the bottom. So I'm gonna start welding here, and I'm gonna bring you guys back when I get it all set up save you guys some boring video here so I'm gonna start welding I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to weld on the plate we got the timer set up here again that hokey uh, chunk of wire brush with some duct tape on here we got the titanium welder running now and I'm gonna try to weld through I don't have a timer I don't have a watch on me or anything so I'm gonna weld around about the same amount of time I'm hoping 10 15 minutes on here and just stopping just long enough to get to the next spot I want to weld so uh, here we go Well, the machine did great. The titanium worked out excellent. I welded for 12 and a half minutes and I measured it out. I've laid down 80 inches of weld and I will set a camera up on a second and see what the amperage was the whole time. But no uh, duty cycle, never faulted out from uh, overheating or anything. It seemed like you could have welded the whole job without it shutting off. So that definitely exceeded all the, the what I read about the duty cycles there. So uh, the machine did excellent. Just the reference of what I laid down there in 12 and a half minutes. This tape measure is measured to 80 inches right here. That's how much weld I laid down on that quarter inch plate. And uh, yeah, it did great. Like I said, my back's getting tired now, so I was gonna take a little break and then uh, finish up the rest of this job here. But yeah, real world duty cycle here, you know? We got to run the Vulcan, we got to run the titanium, and man, they both work great. I like the titanium a little bit more these days just because it's so light and packable. I thought maybe this job would fall through on duty cycle, but it definitely had no problem with that. So I think for a regular dude around his house or farm, this machine's gonna hold up great. Both of them are gonna hold up great. I'm gonna set up my other camera here and get it recording. And the plan is we're gonna read what the amperage says on the front of this thing. And I'm gonna show you guys one of these uh, welds I did here around the whole thing in just real time. All right, here we go.
you know, those guys that are out there that are going to complain that it's not a blue or red machine and how it's not going to hold up like them. Time will tell on all these inverter welders. I don't care what brand. I don't think they're going to hold up for a lifetime. You're going to pass them on to your uh, grandchildren. But for what they are, they're very light, packable. You're not gonna get a hernia carrying these machines around for a 200 amp welder that weighs like 24 pounds. Uh, it's kind of funny, I'm running that 10 pound spool now. I usually only run two pound spools because you got a light welder, why add another third of the weight just in wire when you can put two pound spools for packing it around? That's my philosophy on it. But with this job, it was crucial to have a bigger spool on here. But yeah, they are rock solid, they work good. The Vulcan I've had for about a year and a half, had no problems with it so far. Titanium I've only had for a few months, no problems yet, but time will tell. Well, I'll bring you around, we'll wrap up this video here, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about these welders, and then we'll finish it up. So to give you guys a perspective on welding on this, uh, each one of these box beams with this plate here, I have to put about 50, give or take, welds on it, about four inches long. And in that last time lapse with the titanium, I did about 20. So I still got, you know, 30 more to do. So I'm gonna get welding here. I'm gonna not do any more time lapse. I wanna get this job done. But I'll bring you guys back and talk about the welders towards the very end of the video here. All right, guys, meet back up with you in a minute. All right, you guys, got the glue press all wrapped up here. It's gonna be a pneumatic glue press. It's gonna have airbags in here for pressing uh, glue wooden blocks that are glued up. And I got this done. This is actually one of eight of these I have to build. So um, this one has about 65 to 70 feet of weld. So there's quite a bit of welding that should be done on these. And I uh, used both these machines on the whole process and it worked great. So yeah, like I said, this is a real world review of duty cycles on these things. And I think they work really, really well. So I uh, had no problems with them overheating on these uh, cycle tests on here. And uh, I know some of you guys don't have 220 volts. I've had some people ask how they do on 110, 120 volts. So I'm gonna do one more MIG video after this of a 120 volt duty cycle test and what kind of metals you can expect to weld on MIG. And uh, kind of go over that side of things for some of you guys that don't have 220 in your shop. Uh, granted, if you do have 220, I recommend using it. It puts less stress on the machines and you can weld thicker metals, of course. But you know what? They work fine on 110. The machine won't let you weld past a certain point if you're asking. You're not going to weld 3 eighths of an inch steel on 110. You know, you're going to be limited probably eighth inch or so. But we'll go over that a little more in the next video. And after that, I have some uh, interest in stick and TIG for the multi-functions on here. So I'll be doing a few review videos on that as well. So if you guys are interested, subscribe and hit like and stick around, check out the other videos. See you guys, bye.